Daniel Harris is a cricket writer for The Guardian newspaper. He's not remotely impressed by Australia's actions, but he also can't help feeling the outrage is being slightly overworked. This is cricket. It's not Australia's immigration detention facilities with their indefinite detainees. In short, and remember, he's an English cricket writer. Daniel Harris thinks it's bad, yes, but sports bad, not real bad. It didn't look good. It's not edifying. It's cheating. It's not great. And the way that the older players perhaps prevailed upon, upon one of the younger players to do their cheating for them is not good. However, it's also not the worst thing that has happened in sport, in cricket, in Australian sport, in any of these places. And, for example, the Australian Prime Minister getting involved when there are perhaps other far worse things that are going on in Australia right now is absolutely bizarre and almost indefensible, I would say. Um, in cricket, red ball t uh, tampering with the ball is, what, is a level two offence. That's not the worst kind of thing that is possible. And so the actual element of what they did affecting the condition of the ball is not the worst thing that has ever happened. But somehow this has grabbed hold of people's imagination, I think because this Australian team are not loved and people are running with it. And now the players involved are in all sorts of trouble. I read something today that it's possible that Smith and Warner might get life bans from Cricket Australia. And to me, looking at that, I've never heard such a, such a load of nonsense in my life. And I think what you've got here is you've got an unloved team who have been in other situations that have made people feel uncomfortable in one way or another. And I think people feel that they can rely on sports people to give them to, to give them joy, to give them pleasure, to give them inspiration. And they feel somehow that sportsmen are indebted to them and they deserve to get a certain thing from their sports people. And so if you've got this Australian team, they're a pretty good team, and you're not getting requisite joy from them, then that can build some bad feeling. And I think that's what's happened here. And there have been a few other incidents, like the, the row that David Warner had with Quinton de Kock, which also didn't look good. The way that the way that Australia acted during the Ashes series when Johnny Bairstow got involved with Cameron Bancroft and they were unfathomably sanctimonious about something that was minor. And in that, they were abetted by England, who just should have said, listen, this is rubbish, you know it's rubbish, we know it's rubbish, now shut up and let's play the game. And all of those things added up. And then what you've got here is you've got the ball tampering, which is obviously wrong and people think is not meant to go on in cricket. Then you, add, you combine that with the reputation that they already have and the image that they project and then with the prevailing on the young players and the premeditation mm, of it mm, all, yeah, mm. we're not doing well, let's all arrange to do some cheating. And the way that it's just the, the astounding thickness of it, here we have some cameras designed to make sure that nothing is missed, but somehow they felt perhaps so above the law and so able to do what they wanted to do that even the cameras wouldn't dare to catch them. And when you add up all those things, it looks ridiculous. Did you say astounding thickness? Was that the description of doing all of this while you are being watched like a character in 1984? Yes. Okay, let's go back to the sugar in the pocket. Did you have a sense in that Ashes series that the Aussies were trying it on then? Did you have a sense that they were trying to get more rough to enhance swing when they were playing England? Um, not really. I mean, I think that people often try and do that kind of thing, I mean, or whatever. There's a sense whenever you watch any sport that the sportsmen you're watching are doing whatever they can to get away with whatever they can. So people have cheated at everything in every aspect of the world since the dawn of time. So when you catch people cheating at something as, as irrelevant as sport in that context, it's never that surprising. So people doing work on the ball is not surprising. And where the line is not entirely it's not precisely defined what you can and can't do. If indeed Australia were doing that, then it wouldn't be that surprising. And Bancroft putting some sugar in his pocket is not conclusive evidence that that was the case. Although Stuart Broad in the interview that he gave yesterday suggested that he wasn't that surprised to find out that this was going on. The Guardian's Daniel Harris. If